about it? Do you know what Web3 is? For those who don't know, this video will explain Web3 in very easily, and yet will understand it completely in AMP. For those who have heard about it, let's break your myths and grow your knowledge. Isn't it amazing how far the internet has come since its early days back in the 1960s? Back then, it was just a static, read-only web, but now it's evolved into a dynamic read-slash-write web, becoming an integral part of our daily lives. You see, Web2, which is the current version of the internet, has been primarily controlled by a hand full of big companies. They've been in charge of our data and bombarding us with targeted ads. This has understandably raised concerns about privacy, censorship, and a sense of centralization. But here's where things get exciting. Presenting. Web 3. It's like a breath of fresh air for the internet. In Web 3, the focus is on decentralization, security, and transparency. Imagine having ownership of your own data and having a real say in how the networks you use are operated. It's a vision for a better, more user-centric internet, and it's coming our way. Web3 is a vision for a new version of the internet that is decentralized, open, and secure. It is built on blockchain technology, which is the same technology that powers cryptocurrencies. Do you remember the first time you heard about Bitcoin? Maybe you heard a little bit about this new technology that everyone was saying would change the world. Or maybe you felt a little bit jealous of the people who got in early and made a lot of money, even though you weren't sure what you could actually use Bitcoin for, besides really expensive pizza. Web3 is still in its early stages of development, but it has the potential to revolutionize the way we interact with the internet. For example, Web3 could allow us to own our own data, control our own privacy, and participate in more democratic online communities. Do you know that this idea started almost three decades back? Yes, the seeds of what would become Web3 were planted in 1991 when scientists W. Scott Stornetta and Stuart Haber launched the first blockchain, a project to timestamp digital documents. But the idea didn't really take root until 2009, when Bitcoin was launched in the wake of the financial crisis, and at least partially in response to it, by the pseudonymous inventor Satoshi Nakamoto. It and its undergirding blockchain technology work like this. Ownership of the cryptocurrency is tracked on a shared public ledger, and when one user wants to make a transfer, miners process the transaction by solving a complex math problem, adding a new block of data to the chain, and earning newly created Bitcoin for their efforts. While the Bitcoin chain is used just for currency, newer blockchains offer other options. Ethereum, which launched in 2015, is both a cryptocurrency and a platform that can be used to build other cryptocurrencies and blockchain projects. Gavin Wood, one of its co-founders, described Ethereum as one computer for the entire planet, with computing power distributed across the globe and controlled nowhere. Now, after more than a decade, proponents of a blockchain-based web are proclaiming that a new era, Web3, has dawned. Put very simply, Web3 is an extension of cryptocurrency, using blockchain in new ways to new ends. A blockchain can store the number of tokens in a wallet, the terms of a self-executing contract, or the code for a decentralized app, DAP. Not all blockchains work the same way, but in general, coins are used as incentives for miners to process transactions. On proof-of-work chains like Bitcoin, solving the complex math problems necessary to process transactions is energy-intensive by design. On a proof-of-stake chain, which are newer but increasingly common, processing transactions simply requires that the verifiers with a stake in the chain agree that a transaction is legit, a process that's significantly more efficient. In both cases, Cases, transaction data is public, though users' wallets are identified only by a cryptographically generated address. Blockchains are write-only, which means you can add data to them but can't delete it. Web3 and cryptocurrencies run on what are called permissionless blockchains, which have no centralized control and don't require users to trust, or even know anything about, other users to do business with them. This is mostly what people are talking about when they say blockchain. Web3 is the internet owned by the builder and users, orchestrated with tokens, says Chris Dixon, a partner at the venture capital firm, a 16Z, and one of Web3's foremost advocates and investors, borrowing the definition from Web3 advisor, Packy McCormick. This is a big deal because it changes a foundation
relational dynamic of today's web, in which companies squeeze users for every bit of data they can. Tokens and shared ownership, Dixon says, fix the core problem of centralized networks, where the value is accumulated by one company, and the company ends up fighting its own users and partners. Here are what World thinks about Web3. Liam Proven, writing for The Register, concludes that Web3 is a myth, a fairy story. It's what parents tell their kids about at night if they want them to grow up to become economists. In 2021, SpaceX and Tesla CEO Elon Musk expressed skepticism about Web3 in a tweet, saying that Web3 seems more marketing buzzword than reality right now. In November 2021, James Grimmelman of Cornell University referred to Web3 as vaporware, calling it a promised future internet that fixes all the things people don't like about the current internet, even when it's contradictory. Grimmelman also argued that moving the internet toward a blockchain-focused infrastructure would center centralize and cause more data collection compared to the current internet. Software engineer Stephen Deal described Web3 in a blog post as a vapid marketing campaign that attempts to reframe the public's negative associations of crypto assets into a false narrative about disruption of legacy tech company hegemony. Jack Dorsey, co-founder and former CEO of Twitter, dismissed Web3 as a venture capitalist's plaything. Dorsey opined that Web3 will not democratize the internet, but it will shift power from players like Facebook to venture capital funds like Andreessen Horowitz. Let us know now, what do you think is this the future of internet? How do you want it to be? Join us for more weekly videos like this. Goodbye. We will meet again with a new topic soon.